peace be with you. So this video is about tolerance. <clears throat> the reason why I'm making this video is because tolerance is the magic word, like terrorism, that people, some people use in order to justify all kinds of behaviors, vile or not, right? Uh, by, by demanding everyone else be tolerant, they are framing the conversation in such a way to where any opposition to, to whatever action they're, they're proposing is deemed intolerance and that carries a negative connotation so that's how they frame the, the, the story and that's why um, so you know you can't ask people to be tolerant of everything there is a difference between tolerance and, and appeasement uh, for example like when you when parents have a drug addict child they try to help them by giving them everything which they just used to spend on drugs which is painfully obvious but you know so that's not really tolerance that's appeasement that is your 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 you know changing your own behaviors hurting yourself like like the parents that are giving away all their wealth for no reason uh, that you know to to approve of somebody's immoral sometimes even psychiatric behavior I, I just was, uh, what got me making this video is I was just listening to a song. I just kind of like to listen uh, to songs from all points of view, all cultures. And uh, there's this uh, rapper, Burton, and he said, I shouldn't even have to say this, but now there's a man in a dress uh, going pissing in the bathroom with your teenage daughter. And, you know, there are crazy people out there you know there are crazy people out there are so many sick men out there who will take this as a a way to victimize women pervers men people just just people that want to go and take a look but it becomes so perfectly super acceptable for every man that can whatever dress up as a woman sometimes that's what they're gonna do that's how men think especially you know even as a practical joke, people are going to do that stuff. Not to mention the rapists, the, the perverts, you know? So, to be tolerant of something like that, okay, so you want to dress up as a woman, fine. I, can, I don't have to approve of your actions to treat you with respect as long as you're not hurting me or, or anybody else. But when people uh, try to force us to accept behaviors that are, man, even as an atheist, I, I would be like, that, that's weird, man, uh, you know? I can treat you with respect, but I don't have to say that you're right. Let's agree to disagree respectfully, and that's tolerance. So I think people of faith have tolerated this type of uh, behavior fairly well. Like, for example, the, the, the baker in Colorado that wouldn't make a cake just for that particular reason. He made him a cake for every other reason, but he was just like, I don't want to be a part of this. So he didn't discriminate against them because they're gay. He just didn't want to take a part in it. But he tolerated them and treated them with respect. Obviously, they bought multiple cakes from him. And that's tolerance. But that's not enough. This man was taken to a suit and really had almost had his life destroyed. I don't even know if he had his life destroyed. Man, he just had. If you're just going through this court process, you're having your life destroyed. That's punishment in of itself. But that's what they did to him, and that's their version of tolerance. He made him however many cakes for all the other occasions they wanted to celebrate. And you know because they kept going back to that store that he treated them with respect, tolerance. And what did they do in return? When he said him, when he told them that one thing, they, they wouldn't tolerate his beliefs. So if if there is if there are any victims of intolerance, it is the people of faith. It's not enough for us to leave you alone and, and be respectful towards you. 
you have to insist that we agree to things that may be harmful harmful to our children either psychologically or physically as in this example of, of a, uh, you know a rapist dressed up as a woman in the same bathroom as your teenage daughter and then those are those are serious consequences Dressing up one way is 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 not okay, but you chose to do it, and I can treat you like a human being. As long as you're peaceful to me, I'll be peaceful to you. I will provide you the same care I provide anyone else, because one day you might change your mind. And I know that people don't think that, but one day you may change your mind, because you are experiencing something that you wanted to experience, that you had a desire to experience, and you're experiencing it. But guess what? There are people who have come from this types of type of behaviors and, and now are speaking out against it. It's like a drug addict speaking out against drugs. They are telling people that this is okay when it's not okay. And now as more and more people are starting to believe the hype and believe that it's okay, so they try this lifestyle, You know, they get hurt by it, and they are now speaking out. It's like, hey, this is not okay. This is not okay. But, uh, you know, they don't make it seem that way. They just say that that's intolerance again. So that's it. Uh, you know, tolerance has become intolerance. So in, or rather, intolerance has become in, uh, proclaimed itself tolerance. I don't think people should accept these types of behaviors for real. Like having a, a, a man in a dress in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a female bathroom in a school. That's not okay. Whatever they may think they are, they're still men. They think about sex like men. They just like to uh, wear dresses. In any case, the stance, uh, God's stance on this is clear. Whoever does this is an abomination. And basically God says that he will punish them. It is on Muslims and even Christians to warn about it. So speak out against it. Just speak out. Don't, don't mistreat these people. They're still human beings. They still may have changed. You have, you know, may change your mind. God, remember. God says, remember, you're not perfect. You know, some of us got plucked out from depths of depravity. And, and if we were abused by people of faith at that time, we would have never, ever, I would have never, ever even chose or to approach this. The reason why, one of the reasons, there are many reasons, but one of the reasons why I was an atheist is because of this religion thing. Uh, of how people, of the hypocrites within religion. It's so hypocritical, religions are as organizations, that rules are simply not followed. There's an excuse for everything. There's an excuse for everything by whatever ethnic group you choose. They all have an excuse for something. To the point of extremism, such as having temporary marriages in Islam, right? Temporary marriages. So in Islam, for a marriage, you have to give a dowry. So, so basically, they they uh, interpret that as paying a prostitute for a temporary marriage that lasts about three days. So you're basically paying a prostitute for three days of her time. Call it a marriage, technically, and then done. It's prostitution, but they justify it through faith. Now, that's an extreme example, but it is real. Some people do that. I mean, 
it has become a, a common opinion in some cultures that you can be Muslim without praying. Literally, God describes as those people who submit to God as those people who pray. They pray. Everything revolves around it in the Quran. If you're not praying, you're not remembering God. God tells you, you can't remember me as you should without praying. It's like a warning. You have to use this. It's just a tool. It is just a tool. But they present it as some sort of a brownie point collection system to where you get this many rewards with God for this prayer and stuff. There's stuff like that in some cultures. But just God, God just says that the purpose of prayer is to keep us away from indecency and evil and that remembrance of God is greatest. That the remembrance of God is Akbar. So without that, you can't, you can't be a Muslim. God also says whoever turns away from the remembrance of prayer, uh, remembrance of God, whoever turns away from the remembrance of God, we appoint to him a devil, so he will be his companion. And they will make them think that they are guided, but they won't be. So God clearly says that it's not a, so that's the matter of faith. You have to believe that God, when God tells you this. So whoever turns away from remembrance of God, the greatest purpose of prayer is remembrance of God. So if you do, if you don't pray, you can't be a Muslim. You just can't. But cultures, certain cultures, believe that you can. So I think in my culture, particularly, there are many barriers that why good people don't pray. There are many barriers. Some people have been taught that you have to recite the Quran in Arabic and they are just too old, they cannot remember. But they could remember in their own language and they are told, nope, your prayer is invalid if you do that. And that is just epitome of, uh, that's just stupid, that's not right. They treat the, tra the, 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 the recitation uh, as holy in a language they can't understand. They don't know what it says. They can't even. So, you know, so you're asking these 40 year old people to imitate sounds that they will never know the meaning of while they pray. They don't know what they're saying. It is of no use. Plus, it serves as a barrier to them because they just can't remember. The older we get, the harder it is to remember. So, you put these barriers in front of people by, by telling them things that are, are just not intelligent. The recitation is not holy, the words are. And as long as you ensure they get the correct translation, you know, and, and for example, in the Bosnian language, the culture that I come from, the translation is close enough. There are some mistakes, but it is close enough. You'll still get what you need to get for the 99% of the, of the translations are good enough but people you know they don't they don't do that so that's just one example so I'm not saying everyone who doesn't pray is necessarily evil they're just misguided by these preachers who are telling them giving them obstacles and excuses they're making uh, the right way to pray more difficult by insisting on, on the things that are illogical and they are making it at the same time easier to go toward evil by giving excuses to, to, to people so they can observe behaviors that God hates. Like Jesus said in the Bible, Prophet Jesus peace be upon him, like he said in the Bible, hypocrites, the greatest hypocrites are the teachers and the laws of the law and Pharisees. He tells them you cross lakes and oceans to find a convert and then when you do, you make him twice the child of hell you are. That's why he was killed. That's why he was crucified. Not because he was uh, telling people to do good things. He was also calling out people who are liars and who have uh, hijacked the religion, made themselves intermediaries between God and people, and just started making excuses to lead them exactly the opposite way of which, of which they should be heading. 
And that's why. And that happens all the time. All the time. That even happens among themselves. That's why you have all these divisions within uh, organizations we call religion. Sects. Because at some point they disagreed. And somebody wanted political power. So they used it. And that's it. But these people lead astray, people away from the, the path of God, which is very simple. Which is very simple if you would just uh, put the effort uh, toward the Quran and you will realize. And everything is explained. Most things are explained why they're like that. Why you should pray. Why you should not take drugs. Why you should respect your parents. You know, and these understandings eventually come. These understandings eventually come. Uh, the once you experience the, the the depths of depravity drugs can take you to, you know, you realize how bad they are. And if you are one of those good people who just happen to be addicted to drugs, inside you have the morality. You know, the things like try to stop people from trying it. If you you know if, you, if you're in that situation. Uh, you know, you, you eventually realize how terrible that is. And if you're able to get out of it, you will try to warn everybody against it. That's what I do, you know? That's why I, I speak about drugs, because at some point in my life, in my life I've experienced it. I mean, I saw the destruction of countless people, people who are way better than me, by drugs. I experienced it on myself and I experienced it on my surroundings and it was it was pretty horrific actually all these people who had way more potential than I will ever have destroyed their families destroyed their lives some died some got deported some went to prison all for drugs some were living homeless these are people better than me, way more potential. But for some reason, they got hooked on, on harder drugs. I was a pothead. And that might as well be crack for me. But that that that's what it what that's that's what it is. So that that addiction, even though some people don't think weed is addiction, it is shit. If it prevents you from from performing your life, because I was, uh, I was, uh, I mean, for lack of a better word, a loser. I had no potential in life whatsoever while I was smoking weed. And some people can get over that obstacle, but I, I think even those people are, are very high achieving people, and if they didn't smoke weed they would go far further than they did on uh, while, while being potheads. Because, you know, it has its consequences. You're just kind of lost in a haze of everything. Your everyday revolves around smoking weed. And, and that's that's addiction. That is addiction. When, you're, when your everyday revolves uh, around smoking it, that's addiction. And there are many ways to quit. But the easiest and the quickest way is to observe prayer easiest and the quickest way is to observe prayer especially if you have this foundation that you consider yourself a Muslim just start that look even if you don't stop using drugs right away right but you become a Muslim and you keep your five prayers you just have to be sober for before next prayer and usually that leaves a small window of time at night so even in your failure, you are still not in compliance with God. But even in your failure, guess what? You, as long as you just choose to pray like God commanded, your use is going to go uh, be decreased by 90% immediately. Immediately. You will be functional. You will be a functional person that can actually do stuff. Because 
that panic of never trying it, that panic of never having it, that panic of life revolving around it won't be there. Because you will still have that option. But as long as you hold on to God, as long as you hold on to God and you pray, and you don't break that promise, you know, you take that advice because God says prayer keeps you away from indecency and evil. And that's it. Just, you know, think about what God says in the Quran about drugs. God says, all you who believe, intoxicants and gambling, an altar set up, and dividing by arrows, essentially raffling, are abominations of the devil. Avoid them that you may be successful. You can't be successful on any kind of drug. Even even things that are commonly accepted accepted as alcohol and, and uh, weed. You can't be successful on it. I mean, sure, you can have monetary, you know, whatever. But a lot of people who drink, they come home, they abuse their spouses, they abuse their children. It is, it, 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 alcohol makes evil people out of good people, except they don't think they're evil because they're drunk. It lowers our inhibitions and makes us do things that we would regret doing. And that's very common. That is very common. Males regret what they did in the morning, and females regret what they did in the morning. And it's all because of alcohol. Until that really destroys you so bad, so bad that it becomes your crutch. So you can tolerate yourself because of all the things you've already done, all the mistakes you've already made. That's how it is with a lot of drugs. In any case, God says, uh, in regards to uh, drugs and all you who believe do not approach prayer while you're intoxicated until you know what you're saying don't pray if you're high so that immediately if you're choosing prayer you're not going to be high before next prayer you can't be high otherwise that's the only in a book that invites people to, uh, hundreds of times to pray that defines their very existence around this act of prayer, their their chances of success around this act of prayer, forbids it. Forbids it. That one time, if you're intoxicated, that is unacceptable. So you have to be clear-headed. So if you can't stop using, and you should eventually be successful and, and stop using, but if you can't, prayer is your greatest weapon and as long as you observe it your life although not perfect will not be shit so that's how it works uh, but, uh, I, I wanted to uh, finish that verse so that says all you believe in toxins and gambling and altar set up and divided by errors or abominations of the devil avoiding that you may be successful surely the devil is trying to introduce hatred and animosity among you by means of intoxicants and gambling and to keep you away from prayer and to cause you to forget about God will you not then stop it's all clearly in there so we have to understand that these things that we see as a burden, as something we're doing for God, we're actually doing for ourselves, and it is a salvation. The prophets didn't come to, to save people, they came to warn them. And whoever believed, whoever took their advice, whoever believed them, their reward was that they woke up in this world and a reward in the next world. This is how we define their success. So whoever claims a religion uh, kind of has a certain degree of, of respect, at least, for people that they call apostles or ashabas in Arabic, which is the same thing as apostles. They were just companions of Prophet Muhammad instead of Prophet Jesus. These people's claim to success is what? That they heard the word and they put it into practice. That's it. So that is what Islam is, and uh, this this I started this on tolerance, and then kind of 
really went off off the deep end. Uh, but I, I, there's a, these are just simple things that I don't know how else to warn people about to explain because it's all so clear or clear already, and, and people should really take heed because you know then pretty soon your your societies are going to devolve into these these dangerous places where you got rapists uh, in the bathroom with your teenage daughter, and and tolerance is not an excuse good enough. To allow for that to happen, there are limitations. There should be limits of, of decency in society, so everybody can feel protected. Everybody, so that everybody can feel that their children are protected. And I'm sorry you feel that way, and I will treat you the same. But you cannot go into the bathroom with my daughter under any circumstances, especially when I believe or may think that. The, 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 what you're doing is a sign of mental illness, a mild mental and mental illness. So no, I don't want you in there. But if you come into the men's bathroom, I'll be like, I I'm gonna know who you are. You know, it's, you know, so whatever. Or just provide people with, uh, you know, single-use use bathrooms. Or you go use the stall. I don't care. Uh, you know. So people shouldn't be tolerant of, of, of certain things and, and it's, it's getting like, people shouldn't be even tolerant, Muslims should not be tolerant of fornication. And, and in some cultures that is like widespread among Muslims. But they think, they think the gays are going to hell and that they're cool. But the God says that uh, these actions are exactly the same thing with God. Falahisha, that's one word that connects them. An immorality. This is what people of Lot were destroyed for. Not only homosexuality. To get to homosexuality, you have to first go through uh, fornication. Once people start fornicating, it's it's game on. That's why. So when when you have a society that, that celebrates uh, homosexuality to a great extent. They're, they're celebrating sexual perversity. It's just a perversion. And, and if it offends people, hey, so be it. I can tolerate you, man. I'm sorry you feel offended that I think you're perverted. I also think fornicators are perverted. I also think cheaters are perverted. So I'm not going to make an exception for you because, oh, just because you are are more perverted. That that's not gonna happen. But if you tolerate me, I can tolerate you. The the, the lesson of the prophet uh, of story of Lot, the Sod Sodom and Gomorrah, where homosexuality condemned, the condemn is condemned. These are the stories that condemn sexuality. These people are destroyed. But what what did Prophet uh, Lot do? Was he attacking them? No. Was he doing anything bad to them? No. All he was doing is saying, I don't think this is right. You people shouldn't be doing this. It's against God. He will destroy you for it. That's all he did. And that, this, is, this is the level of tolerance that we are, you know, people of faith should be willing to, uh, to accept. You can't be like throwing people's off the roof, roof because they're gay, like they did in Egypt. That's insanity. That's murder. I bet some of those people that did it probably fornicated at some point in their life. So you're gonna kill somebody, flog them, like the Quran says. Sure, they should. That's just my opinion. But they should do that to the fornicators as well. That is the law of the Quran. I don't care what you think that. Oh, this is this is what God revealed, and guess what? In all the all the uh, interventions tried by people to prevent sexually transmitted diseases or to prevent the degradation of society through single parents and uh, 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 avoidance of teenage pregnancies and so on, were unsuccessful. And we see the degradation of society when when people make uh, bad decisions that are difficult to unmake when they're very young. And teen pregnancy, for example, is one of them. 
and sexually transmitted tra tra blah, sexually transmitted diseases are another. The the consequences of that behavior are, are very clear. So God will destroy us one way or another if we continue to do that. But you never know when. You never know how tolerant God will be. You know. So that's the, that's the thing. God wants people to change. God wants people to change. God doesn't want people killed because you were not killed. Especially people like me who come from a background of immorality. We were not killed when we should, you know. We lived according to the standards of our society, which are far below standards of God. But we didn't, we didn't know that or chose not to recognize that or do whatever or disbelieve or whatever. So we chose to do that. <clears throat> So we can play out the, the evil immorality, <clears throat> you know, so we can do things that uh, we wouldn't wish, we wouldn't uh, want done on, on others. <clears throat> Anyways, people make excuses and people want their excuses to be tolerated while they themselves are intolerant. And this sometimes leads to violence. And people who are not tolerating your tolerance are one day going to come, like they did for a lot, with violence. So at some point, uh, you know, people need to understand that their intolerance, what you are seeing right from their mouths, what they say with their mouths, is uh, uh, what's in their hearts, the hate that's in their hearts, is a lot greater than what they're saying with their mouths. I know you don't feel like that about them, but that's how they feel about you. And they're, they're showing it with their intolerance existence of ever, uh, you know, advancing intrusions into your safety and the safety of your family. And I guess that was the initial example I, I used of a man in a dress pissing in the bathroom with your teenage daughter. But hey, equality, right? Just wait till the, uh, till the victims start to emerge. Screw them, and that's that's kind of uh, what's happening in American society now. Not just not with that particular issue, but you have all these people that are victimized, all these businesses that are victimized uh, all over the country in the name of of what? You have speech that is not tolerated, even even when right. Um, so, first they tried to uh, shut people up, and then if they can't do it through um, propaganda and so on, violence is always their second option. These, this is what these people are like. So tolerance is intolerance and can sometimes lead to scary consequences. Those people who claim to be Muslims or Christian should continue to be tolerant, but should not accept to be dominated by being forced to accept, not only accept, but condone and advocate behaviors that lie strictly against their beliefs. We can agree to disagree, but let it be known that we disagree. So that's it. That's all.